Hello everyone, Hello. it's Pastor Brittany and Pastor Stephen Flake here from our C3 East Village location. Welcome to C3 today. We're so excited and happy you've chosen to be a part of this today, whether it's in person, online. Welcome to the C3 family. And we're just praying and know you have a great experience today together, wherever we're at. We get to worship and praise God. Yeah, if you're new with us today, text the number on the screen because we want to get to know you more yeah. and we want to get you connected in more. So text the number on the screen as well for groups. Groups, we love groups. We love groups here. Groups are so important in the life of the church and we've noticed in our own lives, but even for those, our friends who are in groups during this season of 2020, it's been quite a year. Don't know if you noticed, but those who have had a group of people that they've been able to pray with, do life, talk, just, just do life together, have, um, have really uh, flourished in, in this season. And for those who haven't had that, maybe it's felt a bit more disconnected. So it's just really re-emphasized the importance of being a part of groups in our church. So text the number, find out more, get yourself in a group. You won't regret it. If you'd like to give with us this morning, scan the QR code on the screen or e-transfer info at myc3church.ca or if you're with us in person, feel free to head out to the foyer and give in on the machines. Christmas is such a, a time of giving, not just in the church, but all around the place. Everybody seems a little more generous. And I believe that's because God puts in the heart um, of, of people, whether they know it or not, that this time that we celebrate, as we're heading into Christmas here out of, no, out of November, um, is a time where God gave, He first gave His Son. And the overflow of receiving from God, a new experience, freedom, His salvation, whatever it is, and the fact that Jesus arrived during this, this time that we celebrate, is the overflow is we want to give people want to give it's a season of giving we thank you so much for your generosity and i just encourage you as we continue to look at ways of giving through samaritan's purse christmas boxes the david center orphanage here as a church let's really um really live out and emphasize that fact that we can give because god first gave to us and so we just thank you so much for partnering with us but really for worshiping god and living out that generosity of who god is as we give today now it's time to worship and we have the special honor and privilege of having our family from C3 Toronto. Yay, C3 Toronto. We leading love them. us into worship. So, so prepare your hearts and let's get ready. Good morning church. So excited to be joining with you this morning in your living rooms and your bedrooms. Maybe maybe you're with some sneaky circle friends, but we're so excited to be worshiping with you this morning. And, and I believe that this morning, listen, there's lots going on in the world. And I believe that the enemy is trying to intimidate us right now. But I believe that today, here's what's gonna happen in worship, is that fear is gonna flee, depression is gonna flee, darkness is gonna flee, any anxiety is gonna flee from your room, from your spirit, from your mind. So come on, let's believe together as we pray and as we worship, because we're singing a song about the Father's love, the kindness of His love, how great it is for us, how accepted we are, and what happens when God's love is in the place is that fear cannot exist. Fear cannot be in the same place. So come on, let's believe in our spirits as we pray together. God, I thank you that you are moving in heaven right now. I thank you, Jesus, that you're hearing the faith of your people rise up, the shouts of your people rise up this morning as we glory by you as we worship you God and right now I speak to any darkness any uh, any depression any fear that's trying to intimidate anyone on the other side of this lens and I say in the name of our Father in heaven in all authority of Jesus Christ that it must leave now that it must flee now that glory would invade your home joy would invade your home love would invade your home and I just believe that right now the safety and refuge of our God in heaven is invading your spirit. So God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor this morning as we worship you and pray this morning. Amen, amen. Come on, church. It's going to be a great morning this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're so grateful for your power. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's sing this together with faith this morning. You took me to the break of day. You reached into my world, you made a way. I cannot hide from your love. Yes, it chases me fiercely every little 
We're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit today, and there's nine of them. Um, one of them is healing. But what's more powerful than healing, what's better than healing, is health. We're meant to go from strength to strength, not miracle to miracle. So that you and I could stand in a place of knowing that we are healed in Christ is better than requiring a miracle to be healed. So look after your immune systems. Don't trust specifically a $10 mask from Etsy to protect you when your best protection is a strong immune system. Now there's a spiritual immune system as well that keeps you from unhealthy spiritual influences and that's one of the outpourings of the Holy Spirit and that's the ability to discern the discernment of spirits. And it doesn't just discern the spirit that is in other people. It's not the discernment of people. It's the discernment of what is motivating people. And, and, and there can be, we're, we're told that there's actually like a spirit of, an, of the age. And for us to be able to discern that requires the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, the, um, <clears throat> so don't be careless. Use common sense and beware of the context that we've been thrust into and we are specifically facing an ungodly agenda and you and I have to resist that influence and rise up with the spirit of Christ within us. That's what we need to be doing. And declaring his word and declaring his goodness and declaring his promise and living in that. Um, when I was uh, growing up, um, it seemed all, all seemed very normal. At the time, we, uh, at the farm that Grandpa and Grandma lived in, uh, just up the road from us, they had, um, it was such a great advancement because, because they uh, had a, the toilet brought inside. <laughs> that was a huge advancement. And, um, and so we had uh, upstairs, there was, you'd go upstairs and there was a, two bedrooms, and then there was a big family room, and in the middle of that was a toilet. <laughs> and, and then there was, it was, a, it was metal, a metal seat that was connected to a vent pipe that went outside that conducted the cold from outside directly to the seat. <laughs> the, 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 the magazines that were beside the toilet were not used for reading. You got on and off as quick as you could, in the wintertime especially. <laughs> I don't know if anybody experienced anything like that. Um, what was meant to be a fairly personal uh, experience was a public. Because right in the middle of the, uh, the playroom upstairs, and uh, uh, it all seemed so normal to me, but looking back on it, you go, what? What, what were they thinking? How does, wow. Uh, but... But I just want to say that last week when we prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it, it is a very personal, very personal experience. And I personally don't uh, uh, pray in the Spirit while someone is being filled with the Spirit because it's a personal language that they get, not, uh, not my language. Mine's very personal. But, but once we've experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's meant to go from a personal experience to being a public experience. And the gifts of the Spirit are meant to be public. By that I mean not, necess not necessarily in a public place like this, uh, but as well as this. By the way, did anybody notice? Um, could you notice what happened when um, Shan Shanae was singing? And there was a sound. And it just really caught my attention. Because it wasn't, it wasn't like uh, just singing. It was actually another sound felt like it was from another place. And she may, may have not even known because she was just like singing, but, but there was a sound that came from her spirit that was actually felt like to me intercession. Um, now, now, maybe she's aware of that, maybe she's not, but I'm just saying that there's, that's quite a gift. Um, so so what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that is that 
it, the, the, there's, a, there's a phrase that we use about getting saved, uh, sorry, scriptures we use from John, or, uh, Romans chapter 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, uh, you'll be saved. Uh, that, that in, to the Western mind, that doesn't mean very much. It means like repeating something that you've heard. But the word confess comes from a Greek term, homologia, which means to be able to uh, say the same thing from the same place w- with the same, uh, in the same way. So it's not just that you're confessing Christ as Lord, you're confessing him as Lord from the place, a certain place, and in a certain way. And, it, and, and that confession is not just saying Jesus is Lord. It means Jesus is Lord from, from the depths of our, of our being. And in a way that is, Lord, I need you and want you and desire you. The, log, the logos of that is uh, everything, everything that that meant up until this point and everything that it's going to become. So your experience of being in Christ and, and Christ being in you are two separate sort of experiences. That's what I think. One is a personal private on the inside and the other is part of being part of what Christ is doing and being in Christ and what he's doing in the world. One's private and personal inside, the other is public and outside. So that's what I wanna talk about today. The infilling of the Holy Spirit, it's a deeply personal experience. Um, One of the names of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom, spirit of truth. Man, do we ever need that? Spirit of wisdom, spirit of prophecy, the spirit of understanding. Every one of us have had this experience if you are in Christ. You've all been able to sew together a certain thought into another series of thoughts. That's the spirit of understanding. And you've also had within you the spirit of truth. Some of you, it happens like this. You'll go, mm, I don't think that's right. That's the spirit of God. One of, the, one, of the, one of his functions is to convict us of things that are not healthy for us. And you've all had that experience. Mm, I'm not sure if this is right. The question is, well, do you obey it? It's not if you discern it or not, but what will you do with that? And so in chapter uh, 16 of John, that we shared on last week quite a bit, I think, it says that when, there's so much more I'd like to tell you, but you can't bear it right now, but when the spirit of truth comes, this is the Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all truth. He won't guide you into, into some new truth. He'll guide you into all truth, truth that's already been established. And we need that. Because there is lots of untruth and lots of deceptiveness taking place around us. Seems like more than ever. But that's okay because you've got the spirit of truth within you. He will not be presenting his own ideas. This is the miracle of of Christ in you. But he'll be telling you what he's heard. One of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to listen to what the Father is saying and then share that with you and I. He'll tell you stuff that he's heard. The Holy Spirit is a listener. Question is, are we? He will tell you about the future. I'm not sure if you're interested in what's going to happen. Where's this all going to go? You have access to that information. That's, that's like, I don't know, that just blows my mind. I go, yeah, really? Like the, the best forecasters can't tell what the world we're doing. But he says the spirit of truth that's within you will actually reveal to you what's going to come. So I need that. He will tell you about the future, and he'll bring, bring me glory by revealing to you whatever he receives from me. And that's one of the reasons we, how we can tell uh, the Holy Spirit, the uh, function of the Holy Spirit, he's always in unity with the Word and with the Father. Um, it seems to me, in Luke chapter 4, and verse 1, Luke chapter 21, the first, the first sorry, uh, Matthew chapter 3, the first time we hear about Jesus He's introduced by John the baptizer as one that would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Where's the, who does the baptizing in the Holy Spirit? Jesus. What's it, who is it a gift of? It's a gift of the Father. So, it's, so he's actually introduced that way, which could imply, the, with the law of first mentions, is that was a primary function of Jesus is when he comes, he'll empower you to fulfill his purpose on the earth. In chapter 4, it says this, when he came out of the, the, this, uh, after he was baptized, he says, he came out in the power, or full of the Holy Spirit. If Jesus needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, you and I do as well. <clears throat> okay. What if that's one of the primary functions of Christ, of, of Christ in us? 
is to fill us and release his presence into the earth. What if that's the case? I actually think it is. It's not specifically an add-on. And the reason I know that is I used to minister at an Indian reserve in um, northern Saskatchewan. And when the, when, when the First Nations people would get uh, saved, this, I didn't realize, I thought they'd start, they were speaking in Cree. And somebody says, what, is, what are they saying? One of the other um, people that were there, what are they saying? I said, well, don't you understand? Aren't they speaking in Cree? He says, no, they're not speaking in Cree. When they got saved, they got filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues in the same move. Because they're just so open. It's beautiful, as spiritually sensitive as the First Nations people are. Uh, some of us, we get kind of tangled up in our thinking. And, uh, and, and it's maybe we think it's meant to be, this is meant to be an add-on. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying that what God wants for you and I, uh, the things that he wants for you and I, uh, are better than we could ever imagine or dream of ourselves. We're told in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says uh, that no eye is seen or no ear heard or no mind is imagined what God's prepared for those who love him. You can, your best imagination will not be able to reveal to you what God has for you. But you know how you'll get that? But he's revealed that, he says, it, but we know these things because God's revealed them by his spirit. And the, his spirit searches out everything and shows us uh, even God's deep secrets. I'm interested in God's deep secrets secrets. This is available for you and I. This, and the Spirit reveals this. Uh, no one can know what anybody else is thinking except them, the person alone. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's Spirit. So His Spirit is revealing to us these deep things of God. We need the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on. This is just such a amazing, uh, the rest of that passage. And, and uh, I'm just going to keep clicking along here. But um, Billy Graham said this, it's a waste of time for Christians to look for power that they don't intend to use. We're asking for power, but we're not willing to use it. See, see, I think that sometimes we think the gifts of the Spirit are toys of the Holy Spirit. They're not meant to be played with. The whole, gifts of the Holy Spirit are meant for the benefit of others. Same as the fruit of the Spirit. It grows on your tree for someone else to enjoy so, so, um, so um, yeah, it's not an add-on. We live in a supernatural world. Those of you who are reading through the Bible with us, we're, we're in the book of Ezekiel, crazy first chapter. Uh, by the time you get to chapter 37, he's taken to a valley of dry bones. Um, it's just amazing, that story. But what he's, what he's seeing, he's seeing in the Spirit. We need eyes to see into the Spirit, all of the gifts of the Spirit were used in the Old Testament except two, except the tongues and um, the, the interpretation of tongues. Uh, we're going to get to that in just a second. Um, reading through the book of Acts, you, you find that it says, as they were there ministering, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's not a one-time experience because they've, all, they've already, Peter and Paul have been baptized, or Peter and uh, uh, James, uh, Peter and um, the guy that was with them. <laughs> I was thinking of that song. Uh, you remember that song by Don McLean? The three men I admire most, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, <laughs> took the last train for the coast. <laughs> the day. The music died. Okay, that has nothing to do with this. I'm trying to think of the... Uh, he, but it says they were all... Here's, what, here's why I'm wanting, to say, I'm wanting to mention that. Because it's not a one-time experience. Think of the baptism of the Holy Spirit like waves of the ocean. And we just get another wave. And another wave, and another wave. They were all of them were baptized again. All of them were filled with the Spirit again. I'm just saying that some of you think, yeah, I had that experience once. No, have you had it since then? <laughs> There's another wave. And it helps us to function in the power of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 24 said he comforts us, he teaches us, and he reveals us all things. And this is what you and I need today. Okay, point number one. There's nine gifts in three different groups. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, many of you will... Uh, have been aware of this, he said, and now, dear brothers and sisters, verse one, I write to you about special abilities that the Holy Spirit gives. A word for uh, some, some versions, both the ESV and the New King James is talk about, they say spiritual gifts. The word gifts is the word charis or charis, which means grace. It means ability. 
So these special, these grace gifts, these are gifts that are given, uh, they're abilities that are given by the Holy Spirit for each of us to use. That the Holy Spirit, it says, he gives to each of us. You all have these gifts. Uh, I must, but I have to correct some misunderstandings about this. And then we go down to, just keep going along, uh, verse 4. Now, now there's different kinds of spiritual gifts, but it's the same Holy Spirit who's the source of them all. There's different kinds of service in the church, but it's the same Lord that we're serving. When we use our gifts, it's the Lord that we're serving. Verse 6, there's different ways God works in our lives, but it's the same God who does the work through all of us. How many of us? All of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us as a means of helping the entire church. So when gifts are given to us, they're not to make you feel like you're all that. They're given to the, for the benefit of others. And it's, okay, so to one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wide, wise advice. To another, it gives the, the gift of special knowledge. The Spirit gives special faith to another. To someone else, gives the power to heal the sick. He, he gives one person the power to perform miracles. To another, the ability to prophesy. He gives another, sorry, someone else the ability to know whether it's really the Spirit of God or another spirit that's speaking. And still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages. And another is given the ability to interpret what's being said. It's one and only Holy Spirit who distributes these gifts. And he alone, I love that, he alone decides which gift each person should have. Now let's just think about this. If you, if you have a different version, I'm reading from the NLT. It's usually a little easier to understand, but it's not always that uh, specifically accurate. So uh, use some other versions when you're looking into these gifts. I remember after I got saved, uh, somebody says, would you like to, um, did you know there's gifts? I said, no. You mean uh, there's more that I could, uh, that, that God has for me? He said, yeah, 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 more. And, and it keeps getting better. And uh, like, I just thought, wow, if God has something for me, I want it. And so I'm still that way. I'm a little bit, a little bit greedy in, in a good way. So there's three different groups, nine gifts. There's vocal gifts, revelation gifts, and, and power gifts. He said, I don't want you to misunderstand that this is for helping others. Right, it's not for us, it's for helping others. Let me just talk about the vocal gifts first of all. Tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. That's the first group. Uh, such a remarkable encounter at Pentecost. What took place... Um, is that everybody spoke in languages that other people understood. Sometimes when God gives you an ability to speak in an unknown language, it's a known, sorry, in another language, it's a known language. Uh, I've, I've uh, uh, talked to a, f- a fellow myself who, when he was in Russia, and he was ministering there, and he said, I didn't know what else to say. They weren't understanding me, so I just started to speak in tongues, and the pr- people all got down on their knees, and he said, what are you doing? And the interpreter said, well, you've just shared with them the path of salvation, and they want to get saved. And it was, but what was he doing? He was just, he, he engaged his faith and he used the, the utterance that the Lord had given it. It was a known language. There's also unknown languages. It says in Acts that they didn't need any interpretation. It says that they were all speaking in, in languages. It, it says that they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. Did you know that there may come a time when you can, when you can ask the Lord to give you a language that that other person will understand and no one else may understand it. I don't know if you knew that. That just blows my mind. So, but, so anyway, the, 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 the amazing thing that took place, they spoke in, their, in languages that were known. 3,000 people got saved. That's mind-blowing. So there's sometimes when we're given a, a language. I know, but what happens, this was an undeniable sign, but what happens, it always requires something of you and I. And sort of what happens in my experience for me is something kind of starts to bubble up. I don't know how else to say it. It just sort of, sort of become aware of something. And then you get a decision whether you get to make the choice. Am I going to use that or not? And, and sometimes that can be a, a language. And I believe it's important to present our members. Romans chapter 12 says present your body, present your members. I think it's important to present our tongue on a regular basis to the Lord. <laughs> present your eyes. Present your ears. Uh, present your body. Undeniable sign. Jesus, uh, when, he, when he poured out, there was a sound that happened, and one of the hardest demographics to reach were all present, and he gave them the ability to speak in all of their language. That, to me, is amazing. Um, <clears throat> as you look, at, after, after they did that, in chapter uh, 2 and verse 37, um, it says, it says, Verse 37, brothers, uh, Peter's words convicted them deeply, and they said to him, to, to the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? 
When you see a manifestation of the Spirit, the question is, okay, so what do I do? What does that mean? What's going on? And then he explains what to do. Each of you should turn from your sins, turn to God, be baptized in the name of Jesus that just happened here for the forgiveness of sin, and then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. James is a prime candidate. But you know what? Sometimes it doesn't all happen in a neat, nice, neat order. But one thing that is important is you give your life to Christ first. But I think what happens when we give our life to Christ, we actually have the ability at that moment to be able to speak in other tongues as well. Uh, and it's up to us to activate that faith. He says that the promise was to you and to your children and all who call in the name of the Lord. Who's the baptism of the Holy Spirit for? Who's this outpouring for? All people. All people. So that's, that's what I'm trying to establish. They're all speaking language that they had not learned, but God gave them the ability. So there's known languages that don't need an interpretation. There's unknown languages in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. It says that we utter mysteries. God understands them. And, and so I think what happens what, when, we give, when, we, when we present our bodies, we ask God to come and fill us with the Holy Spirit, and then we get, begin to speak in faith, uh, we get a personal prayer language. He says, because when he prays, he said, when I pray, this, God understands me. It's such an amazing passage eh, in chapter 14. Um, he says this, is the, that, that when I'm praying, chapter 14 and verse 2, it says, for if your gift is the ability to speak in tongues, you'll be talking to God, but not to people. Since you won't be able to understand what you're saying, you'll be speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit. But it'll all be mysterious. So he says later on, he said, so what, I'm, what am I going to do? I'm going to pray in the Spirit, and I'm going to sing in the Spirit. So, so in a service like this morning, we give a, little, we give a moment, a little, little pause. Just create a little pregnant pause. At which point, you're welcome to begin to sing in the Spirit. This is all for an encounter and release. This is personal. This is not the ble- for the blessing others. This is for blessing you and activating you and waking up God's Spirit within you. It says that Jude would say that what, what, you build yourself up when you pray in the Holy Spirit. It's so critical. I know what happens when I pray in the Holy Spirit. I start to get new, fresh thoughts and fresh ideas. What, what, what's happening? I'm, I'm actually tapping into the mind of Christ. In Corinthians chapter 2, it says, who's known the mind of the Lord that they can instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. I know what happens to me when I get in a situation, I trust my own mind. But the situation demands the mind of Christ. And so now, as I pray in the Spirit, I begin to tap into a spiritual dimension. And now I have access to the mind of Christ. The question is, will I use that or not? So there's known languages, unknown languages, and chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians and verse 1 says there's angel languages, and, um, and they're, and they're, they're uh, so three different types of languages. Uh, it says that when we, um, I'm going to draw your attention to the interpretation. It says that to some, is given, so what can happen in a public setting? Someone can feel I have a message in tongues. Um, it says that we're supposed to do this in order, otherwise people around you will think you're nuts. And um, so if you feel you had a message in tongues, we actually, we don't practice that that much. I haven't seen much of that happen actually in the last decade. But if you felt you had a message in tongues, it's, uh, you could come and tell me uh, if you wanted to, and I might let it happen public. maybe. I don't know. We haven't had too much of that. But m- more, more recently, we have people who have, feel they have a prophetic word, which is a word from God, right, straight from God for this setting. Um, but but if, if, we, if a message is given publicly in tongues and that gift is functioning, it requires an interpretation. Now, the interpretation of tongues is not a translation of tongues. I've heard people give, give uh, you know, a, a, a message in tongues and it goes on for four or five minutes and the interpretation is like a half a sentence. It's interpretation, it's not a translation. And so what I do, and what you're able to do as well, when you pray in the Spirit, you can ask the Lord for the interpretation of that tongue. I mean, it's, this is a personal thing. But I'm talking about the mysteries, some of the mysteries of God. But if I go praying in the Spirit, and all of a sudden I'll start to think and I'll start to feel, and before long I start to get this sense of peace that God is saying something to me, but he's actually not speaking to me in English. He's still speaking to me in this prayer language, and now I'm starting to get an interpretation of that. Pretty practical, pretty helpful. Uh, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, it says, the Spirit prays through us. Uh, it's hard to understand, but thank you, Jesus. Many times, 
Uh, you, you learn so much about someone when you, when you hear them pray. Pr- prayer is, the pro- is, is a, a relational process. It's not begging God for stuff. It, it, when you hear people pray and you, you, you feel like, man, that's just like a whole grocery list. You think, this is, God's like an Uber driver or something? Or like, it, it's a, but, but it's a relational process. There's a little talking, there's a little listening. And I try to begin my time of prayer because I believe that prayer doesn't originate with me. It originates in the heart of God. I try to say, Lord, what's on your heart? What's going on? Because otherwise, I'm starting the conversation. And I'll miss what he's trying to say. And many times, I just pray in the Spirit for a little while, and I start to let stuff bubble up and stir up so I know what's going on. Um, I'll remind you that... um, the, and then the last one is, is prophecy. Seems like prophecy in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 13, and 14 seems to be elevated. Why? Because gifts are given for the benefit of the church. They're to build the church. So if someone gives a message in tongues, there's no interpretation. You go, ah, didn't help. Maybe didn't help. Maybe. But prophecy always helps. And, and it says that you're to desire the, the good gifts. It says at the end of chapter 12, and in any event, you should desire the most helpful gifts. Just, so it's so interesting, before he gives direction on how to use the gifts in chapter 14, he slams in chapter 13, all about motive. Sandwiched right between chapter 12 and chapter 14. So, he, so, so in Romans chapter 12 and verse 6, it says that we prophesy according to your faith. Saying something on behalf of the Lord requires an incredible amount of faith. I just want to encourage us, though, that, that we be humble enough to say, this is what I think, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm sensing, and not make a declaration and, and, and it says that anybody can prophesy. It's different than the office of a prophet. So anybody can prophesy, but we're, we prophesy ac- according to our faith. And secondly, um, those of you here in the second service last week, and I, I gave an encouragement to a, word, uh, to a girl over on this side. Um, po- prophecy um, is not a substitute for God speaking to you. Typically, when someone gives a prophetic word to you, it confirms what God's already saying to you. So, so the, the, the way I went about that with that young lady was I said, okay, so does this make sense to you? Is this, and it's a, you know, you're kind of out on a limb here a little bit. But what was I trying to do? I'm trying to help the whole church. I didn't have a sentence. I had a picture. And I said, does this mean something? Is this helpful? She started to nod, and of course, at which point you go, oh, oh, oh this, it's really happening now. Something's going on. There's a transaction. But it's only confirming what God's already saying in her life. It's not, origin, it's not an original word. It's a word that confirms what God's already saying to you. It's okay. And, and, and it says, that we're told in chapter 13, we only prophesy in part. Don't think that you've, you know, like you've got the whole deal. You've got a part. So just play your part. Uh, this is such a practical gift for helping people. It's, such, it's so helpful. And, and of course, the que- when I, when, for her, when I kept seeing this question mark over her head, I thought, oh, she doesn't get what I'm saying. Well, that's not the point. I'm, I'm running out of time. I want to go on. So I'm just trying to help us that we prophesy in part. Next is the revelation gifts, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Um, there's hidden things. The, these revelation gifts, it reveals things that are hidden. Uh, this is not about intellect. It's not about skill. It's not about talent. It's about trusting the one who lives within you. That's what it's about. Okay, so there's a, the word of uh, spiritual wisdom. Um, without the Holy Spirit, you would not know this. It's the, the gift or the, or the word of wisdom uh, solves a problem. And one of the guys who functions in this most is Gord Cannon over here, sitting in a boardroom or wherever he is, you're trying to solve a problem and you're looking at the complexities of the oil industry and all of a sudden you get this, hmm, this is what you need, Miranda, every day as our MLA. This is one of the most important things, son, in running a business. What do I do? Well, you could do the, your best, you know, and you could go on Pinterest or you could go Google or you could, but, but the other thing is you could go to the Holy Spirit and say, how do I solve this problem? I mean, it's so simple. I, I, uh, the way I use this is, and I'm, it's happening more and more, as I forget where I put stuff. <laughs> I know it sounds odd, but I'll ask the Holy Spirit. He knows where stuff is. <laughs> this happens over and over and over again for me. And I know people think it's quirky, but I don't know who it was. I think it was Steve or something. Somebody said I lost my keys. Oh, no, let's ask the Holy Spirit. 
Well, it's so practical. This is like, and I don't know if it's a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or if it's, I don't know what part, it doesn't matter. You're not trying to categorize. What you're trying to do is tap into the Holy Spirit and trust him. That's all it is. This is for all of us every day. And it's a matter of just tuning in to him. So now, the word, it would say a word of wisdom. It's actually not like a whole teaching on wisdom. It's like a thought. Same with the word of knowledge. It's just a thought. And it comes from outside of you, and you would not have known that information if the Holy Spirit didn't give it to you. <clears throat> Discerning of spirits. This is not judging people. Boy, be careful. It, 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 it reveals to you what's going on. And any of you can be in a business meeting or you can be in a family meeting. This is, man, we're coming up to Christmas. Who doesn't need the discerning of spirits at a family dinner? <laughs> because stuff starts to go weird. Have you ever been in a, anybody been at one of those family dinners and all of a sudden it's going off the rails? Well, what do we do? We say, Holy Spirit, what's going on? And you know what you can do is you can pray in the spirit under your breath. And you can get her back on track. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. That I'm saying that there's, I told you that, that story last week when that, that young lady came forward with the scripture. She said, I need to correct you. And I'm going to use the word to correct you. The word was fine. The spirit was, mm, oh, yeah. I need to go for a spirit shower after that. <laughs> you just felt, it just felt like I've been, you know, someone thrown jelly at you or something. It was like, whoa. But the word was good. But the spirit in which it was released was not that good. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I'm saying that these gifts are to help you. <clears throat> and you can all do this. You all get to do this. This is so much fun. But be careful that you give the credit to where credit is due. La last one here. Uh, power gifts, faith, healing, and miracles. I found that some gifts are more natural for some than others. Uh, honestly, for me, the, the gift of faith has functioned seems very natural for me. And, and the gift of faith, uh, simply, it's the ability to believe for positive results in an impossible situation. You, you, what, what happened for me, I mean, this building is kind of a testament of that, is that I knew it was gonna happen. I didn't know how, I didn't know how much it was gonna cost, and Lord knows the amount of times that, I don't think this is gonna work, I don't think, it, well, it's got to work. What do you mean? God, faith is the ability to believe for the possible or for the positive in an impossible situation. Does anybody ever need that today? Like, do we not need that today? This is the Spirit's ability in you and I. Um, and, and then faith starts to speak. Uh, Jesus in Matthew 4 and verse 23 said, it went about Galilee teaching and healing all kinds of diseases. Uh, it's the, the gifts of healing uh, are, is the only gift that's plural. That's interesting to me. Um, it's the only one that's plural. And, and um, what, what the gift of healing, the gifts of, they move you with compassion to minister uh, healing to other people. Um, God wants to solve problems, but he wants, he wants people whole. And, and you remember when you're ministering the gifts of healings, or the gift of healings, it's so complicated. It's different than miracles. A miracle is instant. Healings is a process. And, and when you're ministering to someone and you're trying to minister healing, you come up and you say, what's wrong? And not just here, but you're in, you're in your office or you're in the, in the family room and someone says, you know, I just can't get rid of this back pain. And you go, okay, Holy Spirit, what do I do? You just go to faith. Just go to God. What do I do? And if he says, you know, they're carrying an extra burden, you go, okay, by the way, could you be carrying some extra? Now, now you're not stopping and saying, just a minute, Jesus, you're just kind of doing this privately. Saying, what's going on here? And then what you do, now you have to ask the Lord, okay, so how do, what do I do now? And he might say, lay hands on them. He might say, uh, you're doing the wrong kind of exercises and you're messing your back up. <laughs> he might say, listen, you're 75 years old, you shouldn't be skiing. I don't know what he might say. But I'm just saying, once you realize, once you see something, because what, healing, many times it has to do with lifestyle, attitudes, uh, has to do with uh, emotions, a whole bunch of stuff. And the last thing is about the working of miracles, a supernatural manifestation of God's power. When you, when you see water turn to wine, that's not healing. That's a miracle. But, but I'm just saying to you that miracles are available for you and I. Um, when you see a, a, a river part, it's not a healing. It's a miracle. 
when you see loaves multiply. It's a miracle. People, 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 people. Boy, do we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Boy, do we ever need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Listen, uh, two cautions. Always use faith and always be humble. Let me just go with like, yeah, Tim McGraw. Just be humble and kind. Sometimes it, so I've, I've seen people use the gifts, but they're mean and whatever. Just be humble, be kind. Uh, I'm, let's all just stand. I went a little... Wow, thank you, Pastor Lon, so much. I've been loving this series on the gifts, and we just pray you've been uh, getting a lot out of it there too online. If you have any prayer needs or prayer requests, if you want to hang out with us and mm -hmm. connect, feel free to click on the Zoom chat. That'll yeah, come up on. in the chat, and we'd love to connect with you, as well as our kids. We have a, um, a link on the website for you, so you can get connected and be included. Thanks for being with us today at C3. We love you. Have an amazing week.